Dubuque, Iowa has a rich brewing history and it also has a lot of hills. In the time I lived here, I never counted them, but apparently Megan Carter, there are seven hills. There are, it's actually one of Dubuque's oldest nicknames. All the time I lived here, I never knew that. Yeah. It's a wonderful name for a brewery and it's a great brewery. This is in downtown Dubuque, an impressive, impressive facility. Walk us through what, what people can expect when they come down here. Sure, well they can expect um, world-class craft beer, uh, excellent from scratch uh, pub food, as well as live music on the weekends and just a fun, friendly atmosphere. Now the brewers that are here, these are guys that know what they're doing. Absolutely. Uh, Sean Carter is our head brewer and he went to school at Siebel Institute in Chicago and then Doman's Academy in Germany. So. In Germany? Yep. So that would explain why the beer here is so excellent. <laughs> right on. Seven Hills Brewing Company. Why? What was what was the idea? What, what did you guys, I mean, you obviously saw a hole in the market, but you thought bigger, more, better? What, what, what was we the idea? We did. Um, so uh, the three of us, Sean, myself, and Tim, who's our executive chef, we sat down and said, uh, you know, what, what's our plan? Let's do this. Let's make it happen. Um, we saw a need for a brewery in Dubuque and, and wanted to be a part of it um, in the historic Millwork district. Uh, this area is, is up and coming and booming and it's going to be really great. Um, so then uh, our friends Keith and Abby said, well, let's do it. And so we said, okay. It's and so here we are. It, it's crazy to me as somebody that went to school in Dubuque back in 19... <laughs> that this part of town is like this really hip happening place. Yeah. Like you would be forgiven if you thought you were in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like there's all these really cool shops and places and, and this is where there's a, a real, I mean, do I say there's a scene? Is there, are you? Are, I think you're absolutely right. I think you're right on point. Um, we walked in this building, it was just an open warehouse and uh, we fell in love with it. And uh, we have some neighbors that, you know, some people that we know in the area that own other businesses. and. We just thought a great opportunity and, a, and what a great place. And uh, we love the old, you know, warehouse look and all the brick. And, and like there are a lot of breweries that pay to look this <laughs> distressed, you know, like, oh, we're doing this post-industrial thing. Like there are people that would pay good money to have the look that you achieve just by being in a beautiful old building. Yeah, yeah we wanted to keep the historical aspect of the building um, and of the area, really. Uh, I'll talk more to the brewers about this, but I want to get your take. What is it that Seven Hills does the best? Um, I think, honestly, I think it's our atmosphere. I think that we pair excellent beer with excellent food and we just make it a fun, enjoyable experience. Uh, Megan, great job. Thanks. This is great. Cheers. Can you believe Thank she you. was nervous before we started taping? <laughs> Can you believe it? You knocked it out of the park. Megan, it's Seven Hills Brewing Company in Dubuque, Iowa. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. So uh, this is Sean. Sean's the mad genius behind the delicious beer here at Seven Hills. And I got to tell you, like, this is an impressive moment here. You've got this beautiful door. You've built this like Wizard of Oz like way to get into your brewery. Yeah. You're like a Willy Wonka here in Dubuque. Huh? <laughs> the Willy Wonka of beer in Dubuque, sure. And, and we've, we've, uh, we've, done, we've done, because you're, you're members obviously Absolutely, of the Iowa yeah. Brewers Guild. That's very important. But we've never, in all the years that we've been doing this show, we've never seen an entrance like this. Okay. It, when we rehearsed it, it was much more Yeah, impressive. I didn't know you two were going to be back there. <laughs> oh, hey, we didn't know you were here. Why did I think that was going to be cooler when we, when we were talking about it before? And it was still pretty cool. Seven Hills, we're, we're in the backstage area here. Now, this is like kind of a exclusive access. Do you guys give tours? Uh, you know, we don't really do daily tours or because anything Because like of that. the liability issues. When you go to your favorite brewery, here's what you got to understand. There's a lot of hot liquids and stuff going on back here. The lawyers would go crazy if you let us back here all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Chemical on the floor. We're always going at it hard. Forklift back and forth. Which is why we do this show. To give you the access you couldn't get normally. Although, you have such a beautiful space out there. I don't know why anyone want to, would want to be back here unless they were making delicious beer. But I want to talk about this space and what you've got going on back here. So your, your tanks here, your fermenters. Yeah, we've got six 30-barrel uh, cylindroconical fermenters. Two of them are basically dedicated to Pilsner production. We lager for at least two months. We've got one 30-barrel bright tank here. Uh, the thing we're most proud of is our 30-barrel fooder. We've nicknamed it Woody Barrelson. Uh, this is our anniversary beer in here. It's going to sit in there until August of next year. So that'll be the Woody Barrelson. We've never seen anything like this in the history of the show. This is a, a like a wood fermenter. It's like a, just a big cask. What's going on? Yeah, it's here? essentially it's a like a, a thirty barrel vertical barrel, if you will. It was made down uh, in Missouri by St. Louis by Fooder Crafters of America. 
Uh, they roasted it and uh, steamed it to my specs. We put a brown ale in here with Door County cherries, Pediococcus damnosus, Lactobacillus brevis, and Britannomyces clausensii. And that's sitting for a year, and you will crack that open on your one-year anniversary. Yep, yeah, we sample it the, every month and have a really good time with that. It's good already. So, so like <laughs> right now, if we were to have a sip, it would be really good. Yeah, it's really good. But it's not really... <laughs> The, uh, the acidity is not quite as rounded as I'd like yet. So, And the Brett character is still developing a lot. So August is when we need to come here for this. Absolutely, yep. Get it while it's, while it's hot. I've, I've, never, I've never seen this. This is phenomenal. Uh, so you've got the lager. Now I know that's your, your clock tower. Yep. That's a very like approachable beer, right? That's yeah, for absolutely. people that might not be quote unquote craft beer drinkers. Yep, we don't carry any like uh, Bud Light or Bush Light or Miller Light. Well, no, you're your own brewery. And, uh, do yeah. you, you don't use any adjuncts like corn or, or, or rice or anything like that? Actually, I do use corn in the Pilsner. Of course Pilsner you do, because it's Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah, 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 I'm that's like, right, okay. It's got corn cobs uh, for clouds on the label and we didn't stray away from it, but that is really the only beer that I use, uh, rice or corn. And we use oats and rye and stuff and some of the other beers, honey. But yeah. But that's a beer that is super approachable for people that, that don't think they love craft beer. Absolutely. Until they come uh, here, and then that's like your gateway, right? Yep, definitely. You get the clock tower, and the next thing you know, you're drinking the Russian Imperials. Right? Yep. <laughs> so what else uh, back here do you, uh, do you have that uh, you're particularly proud of? What's 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 cool and different back here? Uh, you know, we, we filter all our beers. We have a uh, Paul lenticular filter that we like a whole lot. Uh, the cool thing about these is you can back flush them. It's unlike a diatomaceous earth filter. You plug it up, you need to break down and restart over and establish a filter bed, sanitize that all over. This you more or less back flush, re-sanitize, and then start sending beer again. And uh, I'm big on filtering beer. We send everything through it. It's coarse, it's 12 to 15 microns. This is another thing that I'm, I'm not kidding you. We've done a lot of shows. This is our 29th show. I don't know that we've seen something like Not this. Not a lot of people use it. I don't know why we get awesome results, and uh, I think they're gonna be catching on soon here in the future. Do you do any unfiltered beer, or everything is filtered? We have done a couple unfiltered beers, if it's appropriate for the style. Uh, actually, the white IPA I'm drinking is uh, unfiltered with a French Saison yeast strain. Um, we've done wheat beers in the past that we haven't filtered. What's the one word that you want us to have in our brain when we're drinking your beer? Uh, probably clean, if I could pick one word. Uh, they're all true to style. They're all going to be filtered. Uh, you know, the first glass from the keg is going to look just like the last glass from the keg. So. And you have been doing this for quite some time. Oh, I graduated from Siebel in the World Brewing Academy in 08. Yeah, and I started... The World Brewing Academy. Yeah. Now, you, you throw that out there. Explain that to us. So, Siebel Institute is in Chicago, and the Domans Academy is in Munich, Germany. And when you do the two of them together, you do Siebel in Chicago, pass that class, and then do an international diploma course in, uh, in based out of Munich, essentially. It's together, it's the World Brewing Academy. So he's not just a cool guy that knows how to make beer. This guy knows what he's doing. One more thing we have to do before, I, before we leave. Yeah. We've never, again, Seven Hills has been an experience in, in new things. This is our 29th show, and you would think doing uh, the show where you go to breweries that, 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 that would be the same show over and over again. This is why it isn't. I want you to show them your tattoos. Oh, okay. Because this is, <laughs> this is insane. What, what, what's going on here? Well, we've got a copper kettle and some hops and some barley and a fermenter and a little, you know, paying homage to my home brewing roots with a, a home brewer immersion chiller going into a pint there in my World Brewing Academy, 08. And uh, this is kind of a spin-off of Odell St. Lupulin uh, label that is kind of what got me into home brewing even way back in the day. See, we've been to breweries where they have like a chart, like how beer is made on the wall. It's on your arm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and show them your gimmick on the copper oh, kettles. So, uh, yeah, now, I, now this, he used to do this back in the day and women went crazy for oh, it. Check yeah. this out. You know what happens to a copper kettle when it gets hot? It expands. <laughs> it's just the best. Oh, and their husbands shake their heads. <laughs> well, everyone has a good time. Amazing beer, Cheers. amazing facility. Thank what you a, for a, coming. What a great space. Like, this has to be the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. Absolutely. It's very warm and inviting, and uh, I love the long tables. You know, you're going to sit next to someone you don't know and have a beer and a conversation with them. And that's what it's all about. Uh, just, just again, phenomenal. Thank you so much cheers. for having us. Thank and, you. Yes, cheers. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to order a beer. This guy's taking his time. 
Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't stand the bartenders. That's not cool. Okay, that fell apart. You need to call rookies up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I say, Andy? <laughs> Prospects are suspects. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Dance with the girl what brung you. That's what I say. Speaking of dancing, can we maybe do some drinking? Yeah, let's do that. Is that your mill? What? I forgot to hit record.